negative 13. Probably shouldn't be wearing shorts, but meh. A little bit brisk. <sighs> Ice possible, huh? Oh, car thinks it's negative 17. These sub-zero temperatures didn't stop the kids from enjoying the sled hill, and they didn't stop me from enjoying my heated garage. So today we're actually gonna start fabricating the twin turbo setup, and that's gonna involve making the manifolds and the pipe to the turbo. So I've went ahead and prepped with uh, ordering all the materials, practiced my welding a bit so not to screw up on the important bits. I got some nice new hardware on my workbench over here as well as set it up for doing some welding and I'm even watching the Mighty Car Mods Gramps build back here to give me some inspiration for turboing my Subaru. Can't quite match the welding skills of Turbo Yoda but at least you know where the mark is to strive for. So with that let's start fabricating. If you're serious about keeping your eyes and ears, don't forget your roadkill spec safety gear. I'm getting started on the side pipe. This is like a up pipe for a WRX, except for with twin turbos, I'll have two. To get started, I had to improvise when welding the flange to the pipe. Once I got the hang of it, it was smooth sailing from there on out. I found that the welds on the inside of the flange went really well, and they turned into some of the best welds I've ever done. with this cheap grinder is for every second you spend welding you're gonna spend one minute grinding it down seriously this takes forever all right so day two of welding thankfully it's warmed up outside it's a whopping three degrees Fahrenheit that is up from the negative 13 of last evening but anyhow it's pretty warm in my heated garage here and I am going to start day two of welding my turbo manifolds. So yesterday I started on the driver side up pipe, just kind of experimenting as you do when you're trying to figure these things out. And today I'm starting from um, basically two flanges on that up pipe. Um, both sides need 
a little more welding and the turbo side flange needs ground down and cleaned up. So let's just go take a look at it. Currently have it bolted onto the passenger side manifold just because I don't have a vise, which is something I might pick up today. Um, yeah, so getting a little more confident with my welds thus far uh, this is probably the nicest one that I've done just because this is a learning process for me and so yeah this uh, this will stick right out of the side of that window over there once it's bolted on I gotta grind all this down as well as uh, weld the back side of it just for strength we're gonna want these uh, to hold the weight of the turbo so I'll weld that side and if I take this off here I can actually show you I can show you what the other side looks like so there it is this is kind of the up pipe if you will and there is a fairly clean fairly finished I actually want to clean it up a little bit more um, flange and again that goes to the passenger side manifold or driver side manifold and so if you are starting out welding like I am and you're just learning it's totally possible get a good MIG welder you know it's like you see people that are really good at welding and it's fairly intimidating for me but you know once you try it um, it's not as bad as you would think honestly this bench grinder here that I picked up for cheap um, can make you the amazing welder that you're not so even if you screw up uh, it's pretty easy just to grind down and try again. So, sure, it takes time, but you know, learning experiences take time. So, yep, this is the start of one of our quote unquote up pipes. So, let's get to cleaning it up and making the other one. So after a bit of fiddling with it, this is closer to the end result of what our driver's side up pipe will look like. And yeah, the welds on the outside look like shit, but really I'm just adding stability there. And I'm trying to figure out how it works best so my goal was to put heat into the big flange and then you know just slowly tie it in to the pipe uh, with this particular side there was such a large gap that uh, it just was very difficult and turned out looking terrible and kind of the same thing up here there's some spots that look okay but on the whole it looks pretty bad so I don't really care. I'm going to take the wire wheel to it just to clean it up a little bit, but really what the goal here was is to make sure that this side will seal and this side actually looks really good. And then the same thing, don't grab hot stuff, on this side is just making sure it seals. So there's some cleanup to do there and grinding it down, but Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with how it looks, so I'm going to do some more mocking up on the car. Now it might have the strength to actually hold the turbo, so we'll see how far I get with that. And yeah, put it on the car, see what it looks like, clean it up, wash, rinse, repeat.
So if you're welding in a non-weld friendly environment, such as I have apparently decided to do, um, there's some simple things that you should probably remember, which is don't put any rags or anything that is flammable near your welding area. So, uh, like I learned yesterday, that is a bad idea to have rags sitting by where you're welding. I'm just welding along, no big deal. Hey, isn't that fire next to the bench grinder? Oh yeah, might be, but well, maybe I'll just weld some more. Weld some more, weld some more. You know what, maybe I'll take a photo. I could text, both seem like good ideas. Probably not fire around, I'm sure. Oh, fire! Yeah, yeah, it must be out. I'll, I'll keep texting then. Well, anyway, yeah, the fire's probably out. There's just this piece here, I'm sure it won't catch on fire. Oh, hmm, yeah, looks good, everything's fine. No big deal. Couple little pieces here and there. Oh wait, that's fire! Also, make sure you have your fire extinguisher nearby. Um, try not to weld on a wooden workbench. If you have to, like I have to, put some metal down on top of it. This stuff's really cheap, just pick it up. Um, also, if you're going to be welding in an unsafe environment like I am, remember the simple procedure of weld, weld, check for fire, weld, check for fire, check for fire, Weld, check for fire. Next up, we're gonna head to lunch and we're gonna fill up our shielding gas bottle. Rowdy, do you like turbos? Post lunch, I changed out my shielding gas and then got back to welding. So I just welded this up here on the back side of the flange and what we have is kind of the the tail of two different welds and so over here you can see it looks not great and then right about there it starts looking pretty good obviously you can tell where I took a break each time and what happened there was I just replaced the bottle and I had no shielding gas here because the regulator was completely turned down somehow after I replaced it I thought maybe it would be about the same um, since I just put it back on but Apparently that was not true, so probably just going to heat this up, go over it again, make sure that it uh, bonded nicely, maybe grind it down, then go over it again. And uh, you know, we've got the other side sealed up as well, so it's not going to be a big deal, but yeah, that can be the difference. That's just the difference in shielding gas from there to there, so. Then it was time to finish up welding the passenger side pipe. If you're brave enough, you can throw this thing out in the cold to cool down. Your results may vary. After about an hour of grinding this thing down, it was starting to shape up, and by the end of the day I was left with two completed side pipes. With phase one of our turbo manifold shaping up, next time on Easy On Cars we're going to try to fit our intercoolers into the bumper, hopefully avoid a snowstorm and then see what we can do about our intake manifold.